Hey honey bunches, lovely to see you again. I hope you're doing okay when you're watching this. Right, it is Thursday morning. Feels like a hot minute since I last made a vlog. A bit's happened, my brother has moved to the UK. Other stuff has happened too. I guess it's just non-boring that like the readjustment after he left has happened. Merlin had a week of like teenage pushing my buttons, but I think he's realized now that the buck stops with me and he respects me a lot more. Um, <laughs> we're having a blast of a time. It seems like our bond's um, I don't know, intensified. Oh, he's such a pal and God, I love him. <laughs> Anytime he pushes my buttons, we just circle back around and you love him like a hundred times more than you did before you had your little <laughs> moment. <laughs> yeah, he's getting his balls off next week, actually, in a week. Uh, and then November 1st, he'll be one. What the heck? Oh yeah, I got a haircut. By necessity, my mom gave me a little trim. I feel like I need to put a little fringe in to like complete this bobby look. I always tell my mum, do not take too much off, but it's literally been like a year and a half. I don't even want to think about that. A, a long time since I had a haircut and it was like a very unflattering mullet and I like mullets, but when they're accidental and not stylish, they're not that great. And she was like, no, we're neatening this up. So, I mean, it's healthier hair now. Do I love it being so bob-like? No, but it's just a necessity and really don't care at this point because even though things are opening up, we had like 1,400 cases today, so don't really feel one to be going out and doing much while there's lots of cases, nor 
when I'm yet to be fully vaccinated. So the quiet life is rolling around. Actually been slightly going insane with the cabin fever and, um, I don't know, drop in company with my brother gone, but he settled in really well. He's COVID free so far. Touch wood. And, um, yeah, loving it. So very happy for him. But the garden has been a literal saving grace and I'm so glad it's spring and <laughs> it's a time of growing and change and um, the warmer weather is getting me outside. And I have a year of uh, many fails to build on from last year and feel like, I don't know, got a bit of momentum going into this next growing season. This morning, Merle and I went for a walk along beach paths with my friend forgot to film that but that was so needed and it's really nice to sort of see him through the eyeballs of someone else who doesn't see him all the time just like be reminded of how he's maturing and he's doing so well (laughs) although we could not hump every single dang thing in sight that would be great i'm just going to spend my morning before i have a um, zoom psych appointment um proofreading a freelance food writing piece thing i am writing and need to submit a draft soon (laughs) the only issue is i when i pitched it did not think through the word count so i started writing it and was 300 percent over the word limit and now i'm like 200 (laughs) percent so i still need to go through figure out my line of um what i'm trying to say and be brutal. Remember, there's money involved in this, Phoebe. Just do what needs to be done. <laughs> I'll catch up with you later, though, and I hope you enjoy the video. That video I just watched was sen bloody sational. She says she's a sociology student, I think, or I don't know. It just popped up in my suggestions, but it was extremely validating um, in terms of all the conflicting feels I have about um, like vlogging as performativity. And she talks about habitus and how it's about the it girl, I think, yeah, and how it's very much a character and that's very popular for very revealing reasons about our society and if you think about vlogs and morning routines and study with me's and watch my life often the person is studying themes of food exercise working studying um socializing hobbying learning new things the sort of having it together image like all these videos are sort of like parodies of themselves and as someone who's been doing this for a wee while <sighs> that can like do my bloody head in sometimes and make me feel like i'm going insane also when people say that like your house feels very comforting um when maybe i have or have not expressed in the past that it feels a bit uh repetitive and i'm kind of really over trying to find new angles and um interesting ways to film in the same space and i'm like ready to move on just don't have the like a life circumstances together to be able to like move out for example and in this video she mentions how in certain vloggers videos that she watches audiences audiences have expressed sort of like a nostalgic longing for the lockdown vlogs i've witnessed that in a hefty portion of the vloggers i guess i watch um and i get it and it's when they move on with their lives maybe like go to do something that's not so filmable um not so home body not so in the one familiar location then as a viewer it's like not as relaxing to watch like the repetition isn't there like these vlogs <laughs> that i am a part of that are made are like a sitcom like it's the same environment and it's um anyway she draws the comparison to feeling like you're in jail <laughs> and just also how social media when it changes like have a life change like you move on from whatever you sort of 
gained success with the people who watch your videos lose interest and I just feel like yep <laughs> I feel like I peaked around like four or five thousand views a video and now I'm struggling to get 500 and the pressure to make like the conforming it girl videos of like what I ate in a week or what I ate in a day um morning routines or whatever is like very felt it also just feels like when I do that I'm going backwards and I want to go forwards yeah and if I'm being really honest sometimes YouTube feels like it's holding me back but I feel like you know it's also on me to just not feel like I need to conform obviously well that was a bit of a ranty roohoo um I meant to talk about some things that have happened as you may have observed um I'm reading Sally Rooney's new book but I'm loving it like I wasn't a huge fan of her first two books but I enjoyed them I read them um I enjoyed mainly talking about them with other people who'd read them but this like the topics in it like fame and what's the point of everything and the environment and career and working and like what ultimately matters at the end of the day feels like quite conversations I have with actual friends lol I guess like feeling sad and like what's the point is a very locked down 2020 2021 mood or just if you're a melancholy feel all the feels person then I don't know you might really like it but I've raced through it so just yay for an absorbing book last week was made even more interesting by an earthquake um <laughs> it was just not fun it was 9 15 on Wednesday morning I was just sitting at my desk and just context wise like there is a I don't know 10 kilometers below the surface or 10 meters 10 kilometers uh, fault line sort of runs from like I don't know Melbourne Latrobe Valley up through Sydney but like usually because of this is boring but Melbourne and Australia's like population distribution um, if we do have them they're a very mild b they only last a few seconds and c they're rarely felt by people because they're not where large masses of people live anyway this was a 5.9 one that was felt from Melbourne all the way out through Sydney and went on for a bloody long time <laughs> and it was really intense for people who haven't felt them before New Zealanders and you know and people who feel them all the time are like what are you complaining about but there was like next to none uh visible structural damage and it was more just like oh we need another test of resilience in this time great
Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank God. Um, I just wrapped up a draft for this uh, freelance food writing piece. It's my be my first one, and a combination of life situation, world situation, but also like first time an actual editor gonna see it, and you know it's actually a thing in a more uh, professional sense. I face like another level of procrastination and self doubt than I've ever had. So it took me a wee hot minute to like get into it. Also, I don't know, just weird situation has meant that my initial like major excitement over this opportunity has sort of dwindled, um, and it took a bit to like get that back while fighting the fear that had come. The fear. Um, so yay! It just wasn't clicking, and I've had a lot of brain fog, and it clicked. <laughs> Feeling good on a Friday morning. It's been a week. I'm gonna go have a cuddle with Merlin, have a snack, oh, and do some jobbies. of admin and computer tasks so apologies again hello this is just the state of things and like huh, it just is what it is so um as you may have seen from the title and thumbnail of the video we have something exciting i have made some sticker sheets woohoo yay oh my god i debated whether or not to bring out something kind of so small and on the lower price end of the spectrum for the shop before I bring out my calendar before Christmas. But the amount of work that's actually gone into something so small in terms of like validating it, I am going to bring it out in its own special moment. And I know some of you might have some birthdays or something between now and then because they're so small they do ship really ergonomically and reasonably. I love stationery. I wish I was better at designing it <laughs> um, and was better at like Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and I could just capture something that's very me but my skills are not so um, <laughs> developed in that realm as they are in like food photography and stuff so it took me a long time and I'm still working on other things but I think for me how I could justify making stationery and selling it in this regard stickers yeah it's food photography and they're like delish food inspiration stickers I suppose I hate that word but like just eat with your eyes stickers yeah that's better this one is like savory dinner themed maybe we'll have other categories of food down the line if they sell but i don't know as i sort of mentioned on one hand it feels like the community i have here only grows in like quality but that's also decreasing in quantity so I, I don't it's very hard to um purchase stuff and i don't know do stuff for my shop at the moment a little bit disheartening but we're keeping this posy yeah, there's nine stickers, all of savoury feast. We've got like a Japanese one with mini okonomiyaki, fried rice and sushi rolls, like a barbecue plate with salt and vinegar, baked roast chippies, marinated tempeh sticks, pesto cauliflower with an aioli and green beans, got like an Italian theme of caponata pasta, cheesy polenta, Greek. See, I actually made all these things, even though like visually wise, you don't know what you're staring at. Um... Greek salad, lemony rocket, golden beetroot pesto puff pastry tart, individual roasted collie, um, gratin, and garlic bread, peas and green beans, and like epic burrito bowls with so many epic elements, the recipe for which will be in the calendar because it's just my favourite way of making them at the moment. Spinach sarg with vegan paneer, uh, like a little rosti with smashed peas with like a mint vibe in there, and a beetroot curry. We've got my bacon potato salad with a grilled broccoli snow pea butter bean lemony dijon salad with seedy sunflower uh, spread on baguette and then zucchini slice with a pumpkin avo um, seedy spinach salad and then burgers grilled with cheese and gherkins mac and cheese sweet potato fries collard greens or sauteed 
silver beet, corn and homestyle black beans. <laughs> so I hope you're hungry. I think I, you know, salivated a little there. And I designed this because I really appreciate in other sticker sheets where you can use the stickers, but then you can also like cut out the background. And then I like to like stick them and incorporate them into like my diary or planner or to-do list. So you can use the whole thing up. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> As with everything, I ship worldwide, wide, wide, and there's um combined shipping if you want to purchase one of my cookbooks or cinnamon toast. The living legend, Northern Hemisphere folks, you're like coming into cine toast season. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I hope you like them. I know they're quite quirky and colourful. Might not be everyone's stylistic cup of tea. That's okay, obviously. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy and um. You stick them wherever. I'm going to take it easy this hour. I might continue reading Sally Rooney. Um, maybe start Sex Education Season 3 tonight. But otherwise, I'm obviously ridic grateful for your support in any way. Especially during these continuous lockdowns and just um, frustratingly quiet times. The reason, the reason these took so long as well is because I initially made them A4. And I thought, these stickers are quite big. I don't think people are going to want to use them. Like... <laughs> I think smaller ones that are more like an inch to one and a half to two inches. I think stickers that are more one inch in size, more user friendly for journaling, scrapbook, planning, decorating, whatever purposes you want to use them for. Um, yeah, so that combined with um, the printer that I was printing them through, stuffed it up and we had a quality issue. That is fixed now. Um, and yeah, can verify they're very thick, very, they're going to last. Um, and I think you could also like peel them off. A certain type of surface after you've stuck them on if you wanted to just don't you know press them in real hard or something that's my main news <laughs> thank you for sharing the excitement Please, Lord, I